Now, if someone's on the carnivore diet and they're looking to build as much muscle as fast as humanly possible, what would you recommend, firstly, regarding training? Training, right. Well, the optimal form of hypertrophy training in terms of fixed weights is or seems to be around about two working sets of eight or so reps with a weight that is such that you couldn't lift it too many more times. Mm -hmm. That seems to be about it. Um, a lot of people think that volume is key for hypertrophy. I don't agree. It's intensity. Um, time under tension per rep is an important thing. I also seem to... I, I guess, gravitate around fast, concentric, slow, eccentric as being a good idea, mm -hmm. meaning, um, you know, the the positive phase is rapid. If you're doing a bicep curl, that's fast, but putting it back down is slow. If you're using elastic band technology, variable resistance sort of kit, such as uh, it would be offered by somebody like uh, X3 from John Jackish. There you go, John. Um, then it's one set to failure at a set um, band resistance level. Quite a good bit of kit, that. It's not the answer to everything in the world, but it certainly is a good good, good bit of kit, and I've got one. Um, so in terms of training, that's it. Oh, and stay away from cardio if you want to build hypertrophy quickly. Because mm -hmm. cardio will tend to strip muscle mass off you. Okay. Interesting. Is that yeah. because it diverts protein away from the, the you know what I mean, from, from where you want to, to go? or It's because muscle fibers are trainable in terms of their physical size. That's what hypertrophy training is. Very high intensity resistance training, meaning very high resistance load, tends to train a muscle fiber to get bigger. And if you're doing lots and lots of aerobic stuff, that trains the same trains the same fibers to get smaller. So it's antagonistic. People that have studied a little bit about muscles will go, oh, there's three muscle fiber types. So type 1, type 2A, and type 2B, sometimes called 2X. And when you're training for hypertrophy training, you're training type 2X. And you're not really using the other ones so much. And when you're doing aerobic stuff, you're using the other ones and not so much the type X ones. So it's okay. No, that's false. You don't have three muscle fiber types. You have one. And it's a continuum. All muscle fibers are trainable as to where they sit on that continuum. And where they sit depends on their training status. So lots and lots of aerobic stuff or endurance type stuff on top of resistance training will only strip muscle mass off you and you shouldn't do it mm -hmm. for that now, reason in contrary to that many people will argue that you know to gaining muscle it's almost a stress response your body goes jeepers if we're going to yep. overcome this sort of load again we need to build something we need to adapt we need to improve you know what i mean mm. and to and so people will say well more is better and I was watching yep. an interview with Brad Schoenfield the other day. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. He's one of the, are you familiar with that guy? Mm. Yeah. And essentially he was kind of saying like, they've never really seen overtraining being conclusively proven. Do you agree with right. that statement? What has occurred over the years is a set of diagnostic criteria for someone who is suffering from overtraining syndrome have been proposed and accepted by consensus in that field. Well, this is what we use to determine that someone is in overtraining mm -hmm. syndrome. Have we clinically proven that that person is irrevocably damaged in any way or unable to heal from that and get better from that? And indeed, what should we advise that person to do with respect to their training or otherwise? Not really. There's a lot of informed guesswork. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would yeah. you... So if, if you imagine sort of the total sets per week on one side and mm. gains on the other side, right? Would mm -hmm. you imagine a, a straight linear line in, you know what I mean, in total, to, in the amount of sets and the amount of gains? Or would you would you believe there'd be a drop off and at a certain point of training, you'd see less gains than if you were to do, I don't know. I think that's, yeah, I think that's demonstrated. Absolutely. Yes. We can yep. go to the literature and find examples of 
there being an optimal training volume, mm -hmm. so they say, for hypertrophy. The thing to understand, though, is that any time you increase the volume of your training, what you necessarily must do is decrease your intensity to be able to tolerate more volume of it. Mm hmm it's an absolute requirement. They are concomitant is the word. It's a necessary relationship. Mm -hmm. It seems from everything that's out there that to stimulate the best hypertrophy, when you're talking fixed weights, that's two working sets of around about eight rep maximum. Per That's week, per me. muscle group? Yeah. Okay. Well, awesome. Awesome. And now, Three times a week per muscle group because you're going to repeat a whole body split three times a week. Okay. So six, six sets per muscle group per week? Per week? Yeah. Uh-huh. Awesome. Mm. Okay. And then when it comes to diet, right? Obviously, if they're on carnivore, they should be getting sufficient protein, you know, at least two grams per kilogram. Um, yep. Do you think that meal timing is a factor in this? Do you think it's better to Not have really. that protein? No? Yeah, look, there are, there are all sorts of people out there in the sciences who are absolutely specialised in on and focused on very, you know, a person with a PhD is a person who knows a great deal about very little. Mm -hmm. I know I've got three of them. Well, or equivalent degrees. Let's be, you know, let's be clear. About what I haven't heard. Let's be clear about my past. You know, we we don't want to be accused of telling lies about it. Not that it would matter what someone's certificates are, but that's a complete. That's for another day. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes. So two sets of eight seems to be where it was. Is that the question we were still dealing with? Oh, we're dealing with the um, like the meal timing. Oh, meal timing. Sorry, we've moved on from that. Yes, <laughs> did, that's sorry. what happens when you get to my age and you get excited <laughs> about something. You lose your track of thought sometimes. Yeah. No, I don't think it's that important. It doesn't. It, doesn't seem to have had any impact on my life and I don't push that as a particularly important factor for any athletes that work with me and there are still one or two that do so awesome well you've made that pretty simple for us a few cool. sets of weights eat your steak and yeah it's to, to failure I take yeah. it every set to failure well all close to it yeah. yeah um absolute failure is that a requirement not sure but also, one more thing about that, um, basically almost everybody in the industry, in the field, trainers, even people with PhDs in this will tell you that absolutely a requirement for building large muscles is to have a, a healthy amount of good carbohydrates in your diet. I can assure your viewers that that is absolutely false. Mm -hmm. You do not need a single gram of carbohydrates in your diet ever. What you do need is to be properly fat adapted. And that can take time. If you're coming from a point of view of having had a normal diet containing a lot of carbohydrates, you will have a performance decrease for probably six to 12 months while you transition to a, a species appropriate diet. Mm -hmm. and the benefit though, is that you'll probably, I believe anyway, you'll probably live a great deal longer, all things else being equal, mm -hmm. living in a, an appropriate diet for your species. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the reason for um, that such an extended time frame to become fully fully fit adapted? You know, what processes in our body are we waiting on? I think your body needs time to synthesize all the right um, enzymes that it needs that can take quite some time. It needs to reset various hysteresis, hysteresis, they're called, which are set points around various things that your body hangs on to and resists changing. It's like a it's a it's a form of keeping everything very very stable. The technical word is homeostasis, but don't worry about that. Um, I think that it's also very much hormonal, inflammasome based as well, meaning what your hormones are doing in terms of the right and wrong levels of everything, and whether you have inflammation in your body or whether you don't so much. I think they're very important factors as well. Awesome. And I think people don't realize just how damaged they are by this standard lifestyle, the standard advice that you're given to eat this healthy, balanced diet, rich in carbohydrates and plant material. It's absolutely criminally bad advice. How do I know? Well, let's have a look at public health statistics again, shall we?
If you're enjoying this interview and you want to see more carnival related content like this, consider subscribing down below.